everyone. My name is Kalle and I'm representing Ellering, which is the Estonian TSO uh, in the OneNet project. As you know, the OneNet project has two main uh, content pillars. One is on the market design and the other is on the IT architecture. And this topic relates to the other one. We had a dedicated task there for the data governance in OneNet project. And uh, with this task, we wanted to demonstrate and give some ideas how to move towards a common energy data space. As you know, the common energy data space is an emerging topic, and it has been reflected recently in many European initiatives and legal texts, like Data Governance Act, or implementing regulations for the data interoperability and access, or the uh, European Action Plan to digitalize the energy system. One element of this plan, there are six elements. One of them is the common energy data space. And with one project already, we want to contribute to that. And we think that the governance is a key topic there. So talking about the governance, we already have many components out there, just a list here to demonstrate that we have some models, like for example, common information model. We have technical solutions like data hubs, data platforms. We have quite some standard data formats and protocols. We have architectures, etc. But still, we are missing something. So why then don't we still have access to the data as easy as it should be and as it's foreseen in the European uh, initiatives? Easy access to my data means in the energy sector, uh, very often metering data, but it also can be a different kind of data like market data relating to the flexibility bits. It's uh, tricky inside one country, but it's even more trickier to have access to my data in other countries. So the solution there, which is still not available, uh, is the concept of single data access points. So th we don't have those, but we need those to have access to data from different countries and from different sources. And then besides having access to my own data, I want to share my data with any other stakeholders. So it should be my free will, uh, but it's not possible, definitely not possible across Europe. So obviously there are many elements still missing. Maybe it's just lack of trust or lack of good models for cooperation. Or maybe the solutions are too complex to apply them. Maybe we don't have uh, best practices to follow, etc. So therefore, we wanted to run this dedicated task in OneNet on the data governance. And as a main result of that task was the reference data governance model. We say that the reference data governance model should recognize the variety of different platforms and systems fit to different market designs and business processes, enable cross-stakeholder, cross-border, and cross-sector data exchanges, ensure easy access to data satisfying GDPR requirements, facilitate TSO DSO coordination from customer perspective, ensure scalability through open source principle and agreed rules. Having this objective in mind, we developed the governance model consisting of 10 elements and 22 more specific requirements corresponding to those elements. When clustering the elements, we took the SCAM model, the smart grid architecture model as the basis. It has five interoperability layers. So we were able to cluster our elements for governance according to those five layers. In the business layer, we had the data governance business case definition. We had the orchestrated data governance, and we have the rules and norms to follow. 
In the function layer, we talk about the data ownership, data access, and data security. There's one element for uh, both information and communication layers, which is about the data vocabulary. And finally, in the component layer, we have data platforms, interfaces, and repositories. Then having these 10 elements in mind, we elaborated more detailed requirements for each element, and we mapped them to the uh, data exchange reference architecture, also known as DIRA, and developed by the Bridge Initiative, the common platform of Horizon projects. So we added this kind of another layer to the architecture, the governance layer, and here you can see again those governance requirements per each SCAM model interoperability layer. Just uh, giving a few examples from here, on the top on the business layer, we have topics related to the business case for data governance. So you need to define what is the case for your data governance? What do you want to achieve with that? Or we have the regulations and standards there. You should be ready to implement the existing regulations and standards, but you are welcome to propose new ones as well. And also we need a group to steer the European energy data space, also part of the business layer. On the function layer, uh, one key is the consent management process because the my data is mostly private data, so we need the uh, data sharing based on permissions there or authentication or so-called know your data user principle. So when sharing my data, I should always know who and why and when has used my data. On the information and communication layers, we talk about the reference models, so reference role model, reference information model, reference process models, which are currently being uh, elaborated already through the data interoperability and access implementing regulations in Europe. And then in the component layer, we talk about the data platforms. Uh, even if there are many platforms, they should be interoperable and data space would definitely enable that kind of interoperability. We talk about easy integration with any of the data platforms. And we talk about the availability of interfaces. And then we run a survey among OneNet partners to ask them how relevant they think those requirements are or how feasible to implement those requirements are. On the scale from one to five, OneNet partners proposed as most relevant consent management, know your data user principle, availability of APIs and graphical user interfaces, and setting the clear responsibilities to stakeholders in the data space community. Least relevant were found the definition of KPIs and proposing new rules. On the feasibility side, most feasible were found to be the establishment of free repositories. So the repositories are the ones you, where you can have access to data models or role models, for example. Also authentication was found to be quite feasible and the others follow. Least feasible, interestingly, uh, was found to set up a kind of European group to steer all the data space developments. Uh, but that's uh, also obvious uh, because it's requiring much more collaborative efforts. With that, I will finish the lecture on uh, OneNet data governance, and you can find a report summarizing the details of the results under this link. Thank you very much and goodbye.